made with unity. My boys. Luke Tarleton Thunder. Oh, yes. Oh. That is a screen. <laughs> that is, that's a title screen right there. We got this. We got this Siddhartha Mind's Eye with silverware. Oh, I love it. Oh. All right, that's probably a little bit better. Sorry about that. Thank you for uh, pointing that out, DJ. That should be much better. Yeah, I had I had a little bit too much. Uh, <laughs> I had too much psych cutlery on there. All right, let's check it out. Can you hear me okay? Doing all right? Should be able to hear me all right now. Perfect. I got to be careful with my audio though because I'm using a, an audio interface and that gain amplifies things like insanely. So you should be able to hear me all right. Okay, let's go. Ooh, new file. Ah, I'm just digging the aesthetics of this game. Well, I'm going to play as I always play. As the... Thank you for having enough room there. There we go. Hey, oh wow, Indie World Order, thank you so much. Rating party of 13. <laughs> you you caught me off guard. I can't even spell my uh, my name. I'm the Jason Ata. That's what I go as. Yes. Thank you guys. I are pug. Only by midnight. Helm system. You guys rock. Pound it right there. Oh. Woo, doggy. Epic Heights. Okay, this is a psychic training facility. Mm. Thank you so much, Freak Game, for that host. No, I don't get to the chopper. Get to the spark thing. Ooh. The movement of the spork. Evil beware. Lily and the alien. Evil beware. Evil beware. For your executioners have arrived. <laughs> oh, angry spork. So, who wants to be our first victim? Cheese. I wonder what it did during the classification of being evil. It all depends on the type of cheese, my friend. It all depends. Other than tempting me to break my New Year's resolution and costume. Yes, I know what. This cheese is going down. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be eating a lot, my girl. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, what do we got here? Oh, what a joyous day. That vile cheese has been vanquished at last. I'm allergic, see. <laughs> Thanks. Hooray's all around. Now the day's been saved and the world is forever at peace. We can all, like, go home, I guess. We've, we've gotten rid of all the cheese. We win. Great game. <laughs> well, there's still those monsters up ahead. Say, so it's a very interesting training vessel you've got there. Hmm. Maybe you could launch your spoon-like fork thing at them. I mean, it wouldn't recommend eating the monsters, but maybe you can grab them and toss them around. I'd have been trying that with my training vessel, but you know, kind of got it in a bargain bin sale. The poor thing wouldn't snap in two, and then I'd be sad. It may just be a puppet, and it may have a cost thing 
uh, the cost next to nothing. But Helm System, thank you very much for the follow, my friend. Thank you very much for that. I hear you. See, Jasonator here. Oh, I I named the Spork Jasonator. That's awesome. Because that's me. Completes me. Completes me. Hmm. Oh, what's a joy? No, no, I don't really want to talk to you. Raise all over. No, I don't. I didn't mean to. Oh, wait, hold pause. Okay, because I want to skip that. Ah, sweet. So my spork. The movement is so good in this. Yeah, it's so good. What's canon now? <laughs> Vile <G. laughs> Ooh, let's let's talk to let's do another voice. Let's do another voice. At the start of every stage you'll find one of these weird doors. Would you believe me if I said it led to like some parallel universe? A level in a level. But you'll need all three hidden eyeball emblems in this level in order to open it. So Let's start searching, shall we? I probably will have to create a lot of voices. Good thing I have a lot of voices, so we'll have to try. These secret levels are completely optional, but possibly tricky, too. So don't worry about completing them unless you look for an extra challenge. Well, I've got the time for extra challenge, my friend. No, I gotta get the eyeball emblems. Ooh, I didn't even see him. Why didn't I see that guy? I'm gonna carry him. I'm gonna eat him for later. So is this like Yoshi? Can I actually use the spork and eat the bad guys? No, I can't. I just throw him. Gosh, this game is slick! The controls are so nice. <clears throat> Flight-loving robot. How do you think that one would sound? Air jumping is a good time. Not to mention a completely invaluable ability. Very so. Beware I... Oh, suspecting jump button. I'm going to mash you so repeatedly that it'll break all the controllers. Or I just calmly, rhythmically push it and prefer the height of my jump. Yeah. Right on. Remember, you can jump many times in the air. Take advantage of that. But don't tire yourself out too much. I suggest practicing air jumping everywhere. It'll become very important skill down the line. I'll tell you that much. Flappy bird mechanics, baby. Oh. When hit by an enemy is something that would otherwise make you say, ouch, you'll lose a tooth. And when you lose them all, you will face the darkest depths of oblivion wallowing in fear. <laughs> but if you lose teeth, try to find some toothpaste. Nowadays, the average tube can actually grow back one whole tooth. If you're low on health, try defeating monsters and grabbing things. You might find toothpaste randomly. But if you have all your teeth, you won't be able to collect toothpaste tubes. Save them for when you need them. But seriously, please don't lose your teeth. I mean, the collection is big enough, and I really... I'm trying to stop. It's an addiction. Oh, that's a tooth fairy. <laughs> oh, she has an addiction. Oh, that's... that's terrible. <laughs> all right. Flappy Bird Mechanics, here we go. Boy, she can she really gets up there, doesn't she? I thought okay, I can throw up. Or throw up, throw up. That bubbly thing with the fire in it is special energy that makes hardest by physics. Mmm, looks spicy, and when I catch a bit of spice in my breath, things burn. All I got to do is grab the power and then hold down the special power button. Not one that turns off the system, the one that makes me makes me cough when I don't have power. While holding down the button continuously, everything before me is reduced to ash. <laughs> All right, sweet. Or yes, that's exactly the thing that it does, actually. Just be sure to keep an eye on the power gauge and appears at the bottom of the screen. Once it runs out, your fiery vengeance or whatever will come to an end. Even still, there are many, many different powers out there for you. How many can you find? Right, I want to use it. How do I, how do I use it? Oh! <laughs> bow, 
bye bye. I'm gonna grab more. <laughs> Fiery vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> no one can defy me. I, uh, hi, um, sup, I'm Lillian, Lillian T. Alien, psychic in training, what's your name? Considering I'm nobody important, uh, anyway, conceivable, I really don't have one of those, okay? Since you look like the last guy that had that voice. Oh, that's so sad. You're worth more than that here. Let's fix that. I hereby W. Chuck. Whatever floats your boat. Look, I'm only here because somebody asked what is even going on? Everyone here has these weird floating doll things, and yours is like a spork. Jasonator here. Okay, Jasonator. He's my psychic training vessel. I'm supposed to have some sort of like eh, catastrophic, powerful psionic abilities, but I can't use them without a vessel. Jasonator is made from a special metal that bonds with my thoughts and emotions, moving and acting according to them. Much as I love Jasonator, though, my ultimate goal is to be able to control my powers without a vessel. So we had floating dolls here, basically training wheels and the psychic powers of a bike. Yep, and if the average psychic is a bicycle, then I'm a nuclear warship, or so I've been told. A nuclear-powered spork, right? Now I need to know the whole story. What are you? What are you eating, utensil? Heck, I need to know all of it. All of it from the very beginning. Oh boy, story time! Now we get to take the journey of the past. Before I do that, catch up on chat here. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I almost got roasted. Yeah, Pug Boss, I'm telling you. This, is, this, this game's a blast. Yeah, even I was like, oh no, you've played this too many times. <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, man, I'm lurking yeah, in the middle of uh, day stuff. Just want to show support. Hey, thank you so much, Hour Day. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I have 18 viewers right now, which it shows that I have 18, at least on my uh, my side of it. And I'm telling you, uh, this is a blast. This is a blast. Thank you so much for everybody joining in. So we're going to go on a journey here to sh find out what how she became who she is. It began some 50 years ago, long before I was even a thing. Our tale begins in the depths of space aboard an orbital restaurant known as the Tyne's Diner. Freak Zone Gaming, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it, man. There's cheese in my way. Oh, a safe spot. Okay. So this must be the best diner is supposed to be the best. People from all around the galaxy come here. Say, where are you from? From 50 years into the future. <laughs> wow, I think we finally have time travel in only 50 years. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, I, I haven't time traveled yet. This place is actually a physical representation of a story I'm telling to somebody based on historical events. Everything and everything here is no more than a byproduct of my twisted imagination. <laughs> Wait, does that mean I'm not real? Oh, you're real to me, and that's what matters. <laughs> yeah, I uh, probably shouldn't touch those dangerous heated coil things down there. Like, seriously, how did they diner pass inspections? Well, to be fair, the real life Heinz Diner didn't actually have death traps and monsters. Should have, though. Where's the challenge otherwise? Oh, i just like to enjoy a meal, thank you. Well, I, I really like Lillian the Alien. She's She's got spunk. Oh. Time to use my lasers. How do I... Okay, that's the aim. Oh, wow. Okay. I have lasers. <laughs> These powers are awesome. Square tomatoes.
Alright, what do we got here? The tadpole legs you see floating everywhere, the spawn of Astrionora, the great and mighty Eternitoad. If you take them to one of these golden fountains, the fountains will reward you with an item. Actually, you know what? They're item shops, okay? <laughs> My tadpole brethren love swimming in these fountains. I seek to befriend every tadpole I meet. So whatever you do, do not call tadpoles coins. <laughs> okay, so I need the accessory choker. An accessory for tableware. To wear. No effective on gameplay, but might look nice. Equip it on item screen. Fashionable piece of eyewear to raise. I can... Okay, let's go ahead and buy that. I got a monocle, and I'm gonna buy a choker. So I can affect it on the item screen. Ah, that's wonderful. He's got a bow. I'm gonna put a bow on him. Jason Nader needs a bow. Yeah, so the dev actually is, is Luthi Wolfgang. He's in chat right now, and uh, this is uh, this is his game, so you can you can talk directly to him if you have any questions. How did you think of this? Think this up, Luke. This is fantastic. Oh yeah, right. I was supposed to be telling a story, wasn't I? Uh, as much as I enjoy your mindless action scenes or whatever you call this, yeah, uh, many unanswered questions. Right. Sorry. So this restaurant is the Tynes Diner. It was owned by and operated by the head head chef Francis Tynes, who some would say was perhaps the greatest psychic who ever lived. Oh. They say that one of his that one of his power could conquer the world if he wanted. But no. He instead decided to use his powers to just do chef stuff. And I guess talk about a missed opportunity, right? But hey, people love that sort of silly novelty thing, and so he was doing some good business. So Luke says that he, he made this up as he was going along trying to learn how to make a proper video game, really. And so this is actually a product of somebody who wanted to make a video game and decided to make a video game. And as I say, with a lot of people, even myself, because I'm like that, um, it, it was a hobby at first. Like it, it, it wasn't. I was not educated for this. I was educated in theology and philosophy. That's why I'm covered, surrounded by books. This is not a backdrop. This is my actual office. And so, you know, you can really get into this and, and do these sort of things and, and learn how to make video games. Um, and that's what Indie World Order really, that's one of the main things that they're about is supporting people like that who are learning no matter where they're at in their journey. That's, it's, it's fantastic. Man, I wish I was that guy. <laughs> I see you have one of his utensils. Indeed, Jason Nader once worked for this very restaurant. So yeah, you know, Jason Nader's dark, gritty origin story. Pardon me for just a moment. Should have silenced this thing. Pardon me. Alright. More on that a bit. For now, we'll leave the Master Chef to his work. In the meantime, more mindless action scenes. Oh, I just got three keys. Sweet. Do I need to talk to that person? I'm gonna go back. I'm actually gonna go back to that secret area right there. Hyper jerk! Yeah, yeah. Banging ringtone? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, my ringtone is uh, name that game. <laughs> if you know that, if you know that game, it's one of my favorites. Terribly sorry, but this area is for stale staff only. It is Xenoblade Chronicles. It's the first one. It's the boss music. So who's the kid? Take your daughter to work day or something. Oh, yeah. This guy gets a Jersey accent. I tell you what. Be sure. It sure is lonely being here. Non-utensils besides Chef Tynes working here. And I'm not so sure he isn't one himself. Yeah, it could be. I got a thing. Are you from Jersey? I'm from Pittsburgh. 
there's a difference between being from Jersey and being from New Jersey. In Pittsburgh, you know, we talk like Yin's guys over there, um, talk like that, and um, I love the, the the Pittsburgh accent. You go there, red up your house, and eat permanis and stuff like that. I had to actually, I still have it a little bit, but over time I kind of, it kind of fizzled out, the accent. They're not wrong, I like Jersey. I have friends there. I have friends in New York. My brother lived in New York for quite a while actually. Some sweet platforming. Oh, whoa, I don't know what that is. Carry it along for later. Oh, she's an eating machine, isn't she? The Tynes Diner was Francis Tynes' life work, his pride and joy. And through his cooking and mundane spectacle of his methods, he in turn brought joy to many of his patrons. And he was living the dream, rolling in the dough, king of the world and all that. But you know, it's pretty obvious where this is going, so why don't you just come out and say it? This is the part where it all comes crashing down on him, ain't it? Well, yes, indeed. <laughs> it all happened one day when the diner was invaded by something. Seemingly out of nowhere, the restaurant's whole atmosphere had changed dramatically in an instant. Oh, it's ominous. <laughs> Can you believe Chef Tynes? Space around the restaurant is all changing colors all of a sudden, and you know what he says? Fix the pipes! I mean, it's my job and all, but you think he would have some mention of his rainbow nonsense. I mean, after a thorough open inspection of the plumbing, I have determined that the leaks were caused by otherworldly phenomena. And as a plumber, you can actually, I'm sure that you can actually prescribe that. With all the signs pointing toward the category of reality warping. In other words, some kind of, some kinds of things are causing all funky colors in space. Speaking of experience as a fairy space plumber, that uh, usually isn't a good sign. But hey, I have family to feed, you know? I'd politely encourage you to leave this place ASVP. I will not. I must save the chef. <laughs> oh, it's a tadpole. Ooh. Oh, nice. The diner even has a swimming pool. Hey, try holding down the jump button and swim upwards. Just hold it down and you'll need to repeatedly press it. And that would be ridiculous. So now you can just enjoy the swimming pool as its max extent. Though, come to think of it, I don't think this place even is supposed to have a swimming pool. Or corals growing out of the ground floor, for that matter. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. They kind of grew up out of nowhere, didn't they? Oh, did I miss a checkpoint? Crap, I need okay. to go get that. This is why I have the developer here. Where'd I miss it? Well, if you didn't make it look like a block. <laughs> if you didn't make it look like the background. No, actually, I, I missed that because I was just so excited to, to try out a new voice, to be honest. I would have caught that if I was paying attention. Ooh, I got a new power. What's this? You don't have to put an arrow over it. I think, I mean, it It pretty much shows itself. Oh, so when she gets hit, she has a, she has a cute little squeak. I'm gonna eat all that toast. I'm surprised the toast isn't soggy. The cheese for that matter. The crackers. <laughs> this is such a this is I, I'm just gonna say it. It's a, it's it's a it's a cute game. No need to, oh, no need to keep tapping. I just got used to tapping. 
Wow, first the rainbow stuff and then the water now indoors, space snow. What doesn't this restaurant have? I mean, wonder what we'll get next. Actually, <laughs> I should be afraid of what we get next. No, seriously, but I get the feeling that maybe, just maybe, I should uh, maybe be a little terrified. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, that was my bad. I just, I was so used to, like, using it to kind of flap up. So even when you do exhaust her flapping, she can kind of flap a little bit to slow her jump down a little bit. That's actually really nice. Make it a lot more accurate when things get harder, and I imagine they probably will get a lot harder. You're very generous with the power, which I like too because I have a whole lot of it. And I get enough to where I can actually, oh wow, that was sweet. Ooh, something's happening. I'm glad I found that. Chef Tynes has closed up shop and everything else is already gone. You are urged to evacuate the premises. If you are to linger around here for even a second, use the, that time to carve yourself a checkpoint over to the left. You gotta hit it twice. And then when you leave, do not go to planet Geozak. This weird light seems to be coming from there. And, you know, centuries ago, Geozak was threatened by a reality-warping catastrophe known as the Distortion. Makes me wonder... But we can wonder later, once we're out of this place. Let's check it out. Oh, yum. Oh, what? Uh. Chasing, chasing, chasing. I didn't think I was playing Ori. Okay, chasings are my chasings are my jam. No, don't, don't, don't. Oh, I didn't make it. Oh no. It got absorbed. <gasps> Everything poor Francis Tynes worked for and lived for was blasted away in an instant. The Tynes Diner was gone along with whatever the heck that unspeakable horror was. But, of course, we all know that cosmic abominations and such never stay gone. In fact, this same stuff was seen centuries earlier on our very planet of Geozak. And back then, it was known as the Distortion! Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> After nearly destroying our world, the distortion was warped off somewhere by somebody called Mother of Teleportation. Same person who invented those teleportal, uh, those teleportal doors we see everywhere. In fact, nobody knew where she warped the distortion off to. But we soon, as Tyne saw the light coming out from this planet, he knew he hadn't gone far. Knowing this, and without a diner to call home, he gave a being gave up being a chef, turned to life of a wandering hermit, and soon became convinced that the distortion was casually stuffed in, stuffed inside Geozak's only volcano, so he would train to defeat it. He would hone his mind and his powers, becoming a psychic unlike any other, and he would become a legend among psychics, and eventually earning the title of Master Tynes. But as powerful as he became, he lamented upon the fact that he still hadn't strong enough, wasn't strong enough to topple an incomprehensible abomination. So he trained, and he trained some more. But that kind of took a lot of time. Oh, <laughs> he's old now, and time ended up metamorphosing him into an old coot. And he reached the age where even going upstairs had become a challenge for him, which meant so much for taking down an incomprehensible cosmic horrors. Oops. Not all hope was lost, though. He just needed a wee bit of help. And yeah, 
We made it past the scary parts of the story. Now we can all relax and breathe easy. Seeker Star. Nice. These obviously seek bad guys. This one you don't hold like a machine gun, though. Yeah, it actually goes away really fast, too. Almost got hit there. It's like a rabbit ear thing. That's pretty cool. It's 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 a frog. Okay, I know the perfect voice for this. Evening. This path this path is closed right now due to renovations. These here are the ruins of an ancient temple dedicated to the mighty Eternitoad. Which we are currently cleaning up so that the temple may be used to even live in again. Heidi ho. <laughs> Dude, I am so going to live here someday. You knew it would be Kermit? Yes. Immediately, I was like, I'm going to do Kermit. I have to. With his age slowly dragging him down, Francis Tynes decided it was time to take on an apprentice. And one night, while roaming the wilderness, he sensed a terrible power of truly apocalyptic proportions. Perfect apprentice material, in other words. So guess who? Remember it well. Aww. Hmm. Okay. With this... With this power, I'm sensing... You really should have blown a bigger crater into the ground than this. Honestly, now, we're talking stronger than the distortion right here. Seriously, you call this a crater? It's more like a dent. Now I'll bet you, you even had your spacecraft do all the work for you. I'm disappointed on your mysterious space babies. One of you. Away. One of you, anyway. So, which one of you is the underachiever? Space baby number one? No, you barely any f psychic energy at all. Space baby uh, number two on the hand. Yowzers! It truly is a terrifying power, especially for an underachiever. So many like you don't even realize you had they have such power until it is too late. Which is why I must train you as my apprentice. So, you'll need a name. Well, I'll go with Lillian, because it rhymes with alien, and you will become my apprentice to my peerless and clever wit, trust me. As for the others, I shall call you Nelil. 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 <laughs> call it backwards if you want, but it's an actual name, trust me. Oh, it's Lillian backwards. <laughs> Besides, one of you has to be the evil twin, and I'd rather it not be the one with the crazy powers. Now, I would adopt you as my own kids, but aside from me being kind of bad at the whole dad thing, there's an issue of my fan club. Ugh, I'd rather not get you wrapped up with that crowd. So, I'll be taking you both to the Eternito Temple west of here. I'm sure the frog monks there will be happy to raise you. As for me, I will return someday as your teacher. But before we part, I have a gift for you, Lillian. Jasonator. Ah. And there you have it. And some weird space baby. I'm some weird space baby of unknown origin. Don't know where I came from. But honestly, that's not really important. What matters is I gain control over my psychic powers so that I may finish what Master Tyne started. That silly old coot. Silly old, old coot. He may be overbearing, but I respect him greatly. So, uh, do I... <laughs> Speaking of which... Why was he really going gray by the time he found you in the story? Given the age process of Cyclops, wouldn't you think that he'd still have a bit of that lovely purple hue in his whiskers? Wait a minute, I never mentioned him being purple-haired Cyclops or his mustache or anything like that. The only way you'd know that is if you read my mind or saw the story as I visualized it. You can't fool me, Master. It took you long enough. Oh, there he is. I enjoyed your little self-interest fan fiction about my life, but you should have talked about my mustache. 
I mean, look at it. Just look at it. <laughs> so, getting me to tell the story was like a pop quiz, though. Stash aside, did I pass? Uh, sure, I'll give you a C minus for the effort. So, you've met the minimum prerequisite to start your journey. You will venture forth as the mountain crater that is Astra Abyss. Astra Abyss. That's where you said the distortion was stuffed. Yeah. Think I'm ready to take that thing down. Poof. Yeah, right. You wouldn't last a second with your current experience, but I will accompany you on your journey, offering lessons and assignments to prepare you. And by the time we're through, I'll be something far more earth-shattering, grotesque than even the distortion. Let's not go that far, child. Now, onward, go forth and claim proof you've passed my assignment. Just don't jump straight into the spinning energy blades this time. All right. Sweet. <laughs> oh, I got a spin. Oh, I'm sorry, spork, spork. It's a spork. I'm sorry, spork. Hey, Yosh, how you doing, man? Yosh, there's also um, another guy, DJ Yoshi Man here. Yoshi uh, is... <laughs> You're going to correct me so hard. <laughs> of course you were. <laughs> there are two Yoshis in here now. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Wow, your training vessel has an actual working eyeball. <laughs> an eyeball appearing on a vessel, they say, is a sign of great psychic. Well, been trying to get that one to show up on my little buddy here. <coughs> <coughs> I can't do that voice for too long because I swallow my own. Uh, all vessels are made compatible for spontaneous eye growth. Besides, I mean, where would yours even sprout your eyeball? It already has those googly eye things plastered on. Who knows? All I can say is that I will keep training until the elusive question has answers. Yes, you watch my stream, I do voices. The Eternito Temple, home of the frog. In all my years, Watching the ships land around here, one thing always gets me. It's how they always, they're always on autopilot, nobody's ever aboard. Rather, they show up here when their owners arrive on foot. I mean, why have a ship at all? That poor ship. It's lonely because it wants to fly it. Who wants to fly it? That's why it always follows you. So why not spend some quality time with it for once? You could fly it to other areas you visited, or visit Mission Control to catch up with the different monsters you've defeated, or the music you've heard. Look, your ship will thank you, okay? Aw. What does he have to say? Your training awaits through these doors. You can do all of them in order, but you've got to do all of them. And hope to become a great psychic. And once you've cleared the amount of training assignments denoted by the number of bottom of the screen, the nearest shuttle will gain admiration of your skills and open up your pre in your presence of your majesty. Now, oh, but... That's just one shutter. Shutters have rather low standards, you see. You'll need to clear a lot more than just three assignments to impress me. <laughs> All right. Frogs can't farm. All right, let's do it. It appears your frog friends have taken up farming. And this is quote, look, I'm tired of carrots. You even call them carrots. Ew, seriously, don't eat them. Master, why must we take veget make them a vegetarian within me cry? To teach you a lesson in moderation, child. It's one part of today's assignment. Now the other part is to rip as many of the darn things out of the ground as you can and dispose of them. Their only presence is making the chef within me want to give up being a chef all over again. Okay, so. So I guess I just... Pick the carrots. Oh, is that a lawn gnome? It's an evil lawn gnome. Strong lawn gnome. What's this guy's? Name? I think I've come to a herring realization. I have realized that no growing carrots on the wall ceiling do not make them any more edible. Oh, I know. You should, the, the banter in this is so funny. 
it's so funny. It's so well written. Who, who, did you get a writer to write this, or did you write this yourself, Luke? Your evil twin is the one who literally eats everything. She was here earlier. She said she'd be fine, but I obviously preferred munching on my tractor. No sweat. It was all Luke. Yeah, so you, you wrote it all. It's really clever. Really clever. If you read it with, you know, with sarcasm in your voice. Oh, so she knows her evil, evil twin. I'm supposed to rip out all the carrots. Ah, oh, cool. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and get this one. Oh, that's cool. So it's kind of like a static thing where you got a lot of different power-ups. How many power-ups did you, did you did you create? Because I counted at least six. You don't have to rip out the carrots. Okay. 30-ish power-ups. Holy cow. Oh, it's the bad guys. Hey, Purple Thickman. Purple Thickman, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. This has actually been a lot of fun playing this. Alright, cool. We're going to move through it. I want to finish the demo before it hits, uh, before the hour hits, so that... So I won't be doing too much of my goofy reading as I have been. Even though I have had a lot of fun with that. I'm guessing he's just going to tell me about the, uh, the targets. After being chased by monsters all day. Pink things taste bad. Oh, crap. I got it. Oh, I thought the guy hit me. Okay. There was... It's active... But I'm invincible. Okay. Okay, so if I get to a different position on the ramp, that's good. Don't leave the check mark. I got it. This is such a cute game. This is a game that, honestly, my kids would just absolutely adore. And I would imagine that you probably have plans of not just putting this on Steam, but, you know, other consoles as well. This would be a fantastic addition to the Switch. That's the... Oh, boy. Yeah, so she can swim. Oh, I like that. That's, that's expensive. Carry it from this item screen temporarily become invincible. Wow, cool. I'll buy that. Whoa. They just keep coming. Nice, oh, he's got a toothbrush. Repeated failings to grow decent tasting carrots. I decided to try something different. Instead of vegetables, I thought I'd grow some rocks. Sports balls instead. Yeah, sports balls. I think I'm on to something, kid. My breakthrough is going to catch on all over the planet. <laughs> oh, hey, they bounce. This has rocks, and the rocks are actually quite powerful. They just fly through bad guys. Oop. I'm gonna lose that. I'm just gonna go ahead and just take out that turkey right there. He said, um, 
Uh, this is an example of a great song that made by Luke. Oh, okay. So Luke, you did make this song. Uh, this is a, this this is fun. It's just got this really really cool. I want to say Super Nintendo feel to it, but actually, if honestly, if this were a game, it probably would be more likely to be on like Sega. And don't ask me to explain that because I can't. It just feels more like a Sega game. Nah, that, that's cool. <laughs> We're truly blessed in a timeline. Yeah, I think the successor to Lo Waluigi game would be a great... Yes, absolutely. It would, to grace the Switch. Which would make success for a fan game go far more. If Nintendo would let you get get uh, get away with it, you know? Seems like all the monsters have been driven off. Did you chase them all out? Maybe, but I really owe it to you and the crew for your crops of unstoppable doom. Oh. Did you eat the carrots and find out that they granted you the boost into your psionic potential or something? Does that mean they were tasty all along? Ugh. It was a psionic boost of sorts, but without the whole eating them part. Those sports balls you guys grew, though. Ooh. People pay big money to watch those things get tossed around, you know. <laughs> By golly, you're right. They can make a killing off those things. That's right. See, Freddy, perhaps you can farm after all. And I got the spoon. Oh, spork. Spork. I got the spork. <laughs> I just remember the Freddy reference here. I didn't... Oh. Explain that reference. Because I don't know if I get the reference. There's a lot to this. I'm not going to be able to finish this. So it went... Swim in this stuff and think long and deep about the sensation experience while doing so. It's a reference to an old game made by Freak Zone. Oh, okay, okay. Now, Freak Zone, you, uh, you're a developer as well, right? Because I know Luke made the game, made this one, but he, you know, maybe you helped out, or... This is... Ooh. This is where challenge, challenging sections here. I need to use my retro gaming skills. gonna get the tadpoles, not coins. I gotta throw it up against something. Nice. So she actually, she hovers in the air when you're using a power. I did not know that was going to happen. <laughs> Very creative on the enemies, by the way. Very creative on the enemies. Swim up, swim up, babe. You know, I gotta tell you, as far as demos go, this is a very generous demo. You can actually play this. This is available right now. This is the I, uh, Iwakon, Iwakon demo, and you can play it. I think my Nightbot has been sharing the demo. Link, it's in a secretish page. What hit me? 
Oh, it warns me. Okay, I should have known that was going to happen. Oh, that's clever. That's clever. I just got to be careful because those things spawn enemies. That's why I was getting hit. It was because I wasn't accounting for that. But now that I'm accounting for that, I can make it a little bit easier. I think it's probably better just not to even worry about those guys. Oh, maybe I can. Get a rock from it. And get more power. Yeah, the, the sing song power probably is one of my favorites. Of, one of my favorites that I've tried, at least, because it it's basically a gun with music. This game is just phenomenal. I would honestly spend more than just an hour playing it. You come out with a full release of this, I will. I will seriously pick this up. I will pick this up in a heartbeat. I will. I will sing its praises and tell people they they, they need to check this game out. Uh. I found the secretish download page. Yeah, you found it. Good. I'm glad you found the secretish download page. Look for that secretish download page. I actually have a secretish link that pops up every once in a while. Nightbot's doing it. He's not very reliable. You'll have to excuse him. I think he was upgraded from a Texas Instruments. I think it was. Uh, I think he's an upgrade from a Texas Instruments calculator. So you have to excuse him, he's not very bright. I think I got one more. Open it up. Grab the spork. If I call it a spoon again, you guys are going to kick me out of your game. There's more to it. Alright, so this is the last one. Here's the thing, guys. I spend my... Uh, my lunch break doing this and so and I was able to get two hours and basically say I'm gonna do two hours for Iowa Con and uh, everybody's very respectful of that but it's just about two o'clock and so I am gonna go ahead and we're gonna raid somebody else that's doing Iowa Con right now and check that out hey thank you very much so much for joining the game today and being a part of this this was an absolute blast. This is a fun game. Psy Cutlery. Okay. This is Psy Cutlery by Eyes. Let's see here. Eyes and Everything. All right. Lamppost, thank you very much for that. Thank you. And DJ Yoshiman, great music. Um, thank you very much, Luke. This was fantastic. Elementalist was awesome. Cargast was really cool. This game was fantastic. I mean... Just think about playing three great games all in one stream. I'm going to revisit this one. I'm going to totally revisit this one in the future. The plan is...